Okay, let's do this again. And maybe the last one is fine. I encourage you to watch some videos. I've got a video suggestion in the book. Uh, but watch some videos on Mars. Think about Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. It'll help bring it to life. But make sure you can do it, what I just did on the board and you can see the patterns. And uh, again, repetition, repetition. So anyway, Mer my very excellent mother, the inner planets, iron core, rock mantle, crust, and a variety of things. So you can just rattle off a summary and you will be good. Mars is the god of what? Yeah, you know. Mars is the god of war. And why is it the god of war? Well, maybe you can see in this video that I made that orange. Uh, some people call it the red planet. It looks to me a little more orangish uh, than red. And I guess red blood. But why not, why not the god of love, Valentino? Mars, good. call it Valentino. Don't call it Mars, call it Valentino. The god of love, I mean, you know, Venus didn't do too well in terms of love and beauty once you go there. Anyway, it's just made up. It's just made up, right? Mars, Aries, whatever you want to call it. I mean, other, other people, other cultures. So there's no way that this, just because it's called the god of war, where it is in the sky, it doesn't affect your life and your personality and your fate and all that stuff just riffing on some ideas, some stories. Mars, how wide, it's the, Mars is the world of half and two, right? Half as wide as Earth, one and a half times as far from Sun. What's there? I love this picture, right? Here we go, here's our moon. And then if you line them up, if you line them up, 200 times farther than that is Mars. 200 times farther than our moon. So if you want to go there, that's going to be rough. Uh, it is twice as wide as moon. That's how big moon was before it slammed into us and broke into pieces, etc. And who knows where it came from? You know, maybe asteroid belt, right? So, uh, but now, as it came together and cooled, it, it didn't stay warm, and you got that. And then you have this different world. Again, I, I call it orange, just if you take a look. You can see the little white caps. That's the best I've ever seen in myself in my, my naked eye, or not naked eye, you know, in the telescope. So uh, two different worlds, right? Two very different worlds. Uh, you know, you look out at Mars and people imagine, they, just like they did with Venus, imagine and people thought, well, maybe they're Martians, right? You've heard of Martians. It's all kinds of fantasies. Sometimes on uh, the internet there's this, stuff that they do so that they can fish for your information, I suppose. Uh, and they say, uh, Mars is gonna be uh, 75 times closer and appear as big as a full moon. First off, that, the numbers don't even make sense. I mean, I've seen this, right? Um, we would have a problem, a big problem. I mean, is that real? Well, Mars, if Mars is as big as full, a full moon, okay. Mars is two, twice as wide twice as wide. And so, the only way Mars will look the same size as Moon is if Mars is twice as far as Moon. Right now it's 200 times as far. If Mars is in that close, we've got a big problem. Run up your credit cards, do as you wish, being kind to others still, always. But that's not gonna happen. But people talk about it, people wonder about Mars, right? Uh, 87, right, Schiaparelli, 9 inch, they got bigger and bigger telescopes, saw some grooves, Italian canali grooves, Americans, canals, there's canals are bringing the water from the, from the polar region to the equator, and I wonder what is, and, you know, and people wonder, so, you know, I'm making fun, but, but, who knows? And you got films, and who knows? And you know, you see the grooves, and you get up there, and then we gotta go closer, and we go explore it, and no, not so much, right? Just some sort of lighting and grooves. And the base on Mars, right? 1976, unmanned Viking mission. <laughs> you go there, and uh, 
looking for uh, microorganisms. And you see the structure, and it looked like a face. It looked like a face. See the face? And astronomers go, oh, hey, cool, that looks like a face. And then, you know, the press kind of gets a hold of it. And not, not, not to really make fun, but, you know, people, people got all hyped up about this face. Maybe they're communi communicating to us. Maybe they're communicating to us. Uh, maybe, you know, that's just their, their worship. Maybe they're doing, who knows, what, what is that? That's pretty crazy, right? And then you, you need to just go look at it. And you see that it was an illusion. And so what do you do? You go up closer, it's still a face. It looks like a, oh, wait a minute. Not so much a face, not so much a face. Sand dune, remember the wind? We got wind, we got granular stuff. We got, you know, what's underneath? Maybe there's buildings. You know, I mean, it's kind of cool. You can radar image and do things like that. Maybe there's pyramids. I mean, it's fun to, to think about it, but you know, be careful with made up stuff or wondering versus actually doing the science. You want to know, you do the science. From just above our atmosphere, Hubble Space Telescope, wonderful, went up in 1990, glorious, glorious. And so it can see Mars that well, but you, nothing like going there, right? Nothing like going there. And so you go and you check it out, and you get these images, and you've got metal iron, yep, iron, and we're still exploring this, so that InSight mission is exploring to see this, but look at this, kind of cool, you can make jewelry out of this garnet and olivine and it's kind of different layers you don't have to worry about that but core and mantle core and mantle right so basic idea basic structure all right so what's there lots of stuff craters huge cooling crack volcanoes thin atmosphere polar ice what happened ha huh. i'm gonna show you something all right so quick review pause and review rattle it off you know what uh, you know what it is Two Earth years, 24 and a half hour spin, tilted, yes, about like Earth's six month seasons, lots of missions, lots of missions. Here's the Viking mission, 1976, 200 years since 1776, an important year for the United States of America. And so go there and you see this, this world, these volcanic bombs, kind of a bit of a hazy atmosphere, right? Look at the colors a little different. And you have these talk by radio and get signals, get instructions by radio. No people, no people have ever been to Mars as of this making, and I'm pretty sure that's, that, uh, that's gonna hold true for, for a little while. So that's, that's the world, and notice, notice this. Now, that was crazy though, imagine. So this is 76, right? We just gone to the moon, and we're going up there, and you're sending this craft up to that place. It's still far away, and you're gonna land on this thing. You've never, never done it before. You've been wondering about Martians and all this stuff, and you land on it, and that's pretty amazing. I mean, you could crash so easily. Huh? I mean, that's just phenomenal. That's 1976, right? Crazy. And so it's pretty exciting. One of my favorite pictures is oh, this guy, like looking at this guy going, I can't believe you actually wore that shirt. Nonetheless, <laughs> it is cause for celebration. <laughs> um, cause for celebration indeed. Pathfinder, 1990s, late 90s. Uh, a little sojourner, a little, little probe that goes out with a little solar panel on the back and it got stuck and they had a, how do you get it unstuck? Well, you got to communicate through radio so it doesn't respond like a video game response. It's not an instant response. So there's all these interesting things. How do you get it there? Anyway, that's what Mars looks like. Ah, wow, that's what Mars looks like. I don't see any buildings. I didn't see any canals. Um, Spirit and Opportunity went there and they were kind of wrapped up in a big beach ball and they dropped it and just before the launch, they still hadn't gotten the beach ball to work out, and it was kind of stressful, and they, they managed, though. And of course, there's an atmosphere, but a little thin atmosphere, but you can still use a parachute, right? And they wanted uh, the first bounce, they're estimating to hit, hit the ground in that big beach ball and bounce, and they bounced here, so that's pretty good, right? That's really good. You got air, that's great. 
then it lands and then it unwraps, kind of like origami. It was all the electronics wrapped up. A lot of people work on this stuff. This is crazy. This is not guessing. This is not Hollywood. You know, due respect to Hollywood. Where are they going? If you want to look for water, don't dig. It's already been dug out for you. Go over there. So you got spirit and opportunity going out there looking for stuff and they found signs of water. There's the platform, uh, tracks, you know. So it, why? how do we know that? Because orbiters, right? You've got orbiter looking down, tracking this stuff. Um, opportunity, look. See, geologists get all excited about this stuff. They go, oh, something, it pushed up. I haven't seen that before. Um, evidence, clues. Look at this granular, eroded surface. Let's go up close to it. Look at that erosion. Oh, look at that chunk. My very excellent mother actually. Asteroids. Huh. That belt's not too far away. Some chunk landed. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting. It didn't pulverize. What kind of landing? That, that's interesting stuff. Uh, islands, you see some craters, it's got craters, it's got craters there and it's got a face, look, it's a face, it's another face, there's so many faces, look, it's a smiley face on Mars, but humans, we see faces, we see faces in bark, we make up, you know, just, you know, it's in our head that we're seeing the pattern, so, ah, uh, Olympus Mons, remember, it was hot, pushing up, releasing gas, lava, Heat from inside. Huge. Erosion, look at that, granular. Looks like a sand dollar, right? But you know, we haven't found life. But Spirit and Opportunity did find, so it's the chemistry of it is, is critical. You find uh, evidence that water was there, was there. Um, erosion happens, landslides, cooling cracks. There it is. Olympus Mons was hot. Vallis Marineris, San Francisco to Washington, D.C. Vallis Marineris. It cooled and cracked. And there's interesting things. And you see all these little spots over there with uh, volcanoes. You know, and, and I think it was Viking that went there in the big dust storm covering everything. And, oh, man, but the all volcanoes peeking through and then it clears up. You get this global dust storm kind of thing from that thin, very thin atmosphere. So here's something I haven't told you. The atmosphere of Venus is approximately 100 times thicker, more dense than Earth, just like Earth was earlier on. Um, the atmosphere of Mars is 100 times less thin, approximately, round number, right? Less than, so. Very different worlds on Earth is like Goldilocks, right there in between, isn't it? Not too hot, not too cold, just right, not too much gas. Of course, we like it. Fish don't particularly like walking around where we like to be. What happened there? Clues, evidence, thin atmosphere. Not much of a blanket, right? So what does that mean? UV light? coming in, greenhouse gas, huh? hmm, what does that mean? What caused this? People questioned it, explored it. Seems to be that that was water flow on the surface of Mars, water on the surface of Mars. What could it be? Let me go back here. So curiosity. I mentioned the, the Curiosity mission that landed there in 2012. Been going strong as of now. A lot of good data. You got it. It's all in the science. It's all in the electronics. It's all in the computer science. It's all in the physics. It's all in the chemistry. Right? It's all in the geology. And they got to figure it out. And people work on little bits, and that's what they do day to day. And then they find out stuff, and we get to go, wow, that's cool. Thanks. Um, it seems like a couple things. It seems like there's knee-deep water that was, in the past, on the surface of Mars. It'd be cool to find, like, fish bones or something, right? I mean, that'd be great. Who knows? 
or maybe it's just covered just underneath. I haven't found anything like that yet. But an environment for life seems to be. And even below the surface, there could be a water brine, a, a salty water. Oh, salt. Salt water? Could there be life in salt water, like our oceans? I mean, interesting, like mineral water? What, what's going on? Maybe there's some squid down there. Talk about squid here in a little bit, too. So it's crazy. Now what happened? What happened? Take a look at this. Before I go there, you might have paused on that. That's okay. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you something. This is cool. This is worth the time you've spent listening to me ramble on. I've got a, a pump. It's going to pull the air through, not really pull the air, create negative pressure, reduced pressure. Okay. And what I'm going to do, and you see I have a magnet here. It's related to magnets. So what if, what if, I mean, what, what happened to the water on the surface? Let me go over here. Do a little demo here. I'm going to get some water. What's water? Is it comet juice? Did comets leave this? Are there multiple processes? Explore, right? We've got questions to explore. We need people to go out there and do that. We need people to do a lot of things. You don't have to do it, but you can. All right, I got some water. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself in danger here, just for you. That's just tap water, right? That's fine. Just tap water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the air out. So what would happen if Mars, half as wide as Earth, cooled, was hot, but smaller, so it cooled, Losing its, still spinning fast, but losing its liquid iron, reducing that, uh, losing its then magnetic field, right? Losing its magnetic field. What's, what don't you have protection from? Solar wind. Solar wind. I got another question for you. Solar wind. Nope. It, why? Because it cooled inside. No liquid iron. Still spinning fast, but cool. So, see little to no, not enough liquid iron to create a magnetic field to protect from the solar wind. Solar wind comes in, the particles, the protons, come in. Maybe it strips the atmosphere. What happens, I got water, I got knee deep water, I'm running around having fun. So let's take the water, let's take the air out, let the solar wind strip it away. Here's some water, what happens to the water? Some, they hit each other, some go slower, some go faster, slower, faster, slower, faster. When the air is removed, then there's less pressure, and the fast ones can just fly off. The fast ones just go, and the fast ones we experience as being hotter, and the slower ones we experience as being colder. Is this getting hotter? I mean, if the fast ones are leaving, Who's left behind? But if on Mars, because it's half as wide as Earth and it's wet, then it cooled and lost its magnetic field and solar wind strips away the atmosphere, what's going to happen to surface water? I, it's, 
you know, it's a thought. One can explore that. It doesn't mean it's so, but maybe there's data. Maybe I'll let you explore that. Is that valid? Is that accepted? Well, we keep looking. We keep looking. Now I'm going to endanger myself. I'm going to let the air back in. Ugh. I am going to stick my fingers into hot, boiling water. I can feel it. Boy, can I feel it. It's colder because the hot ones left. And eventually. So maybe, just maybe, that's what happened on the surface of Mars to its water. Maybe, just maybe, there was life, an environment, a place for life. Right? How do we know? You explore. Just because it makes sense doesn't mean it's so, Aristotle. All right, what do we got here? Got some pictures. All right, sorry. Uh, kind of, kind of okay. All right, so there's a thought, and that's how we do it. That's what science is about. You get a thought, you go explore it. See if it's true. See what people found. Water at the poles, there's carbon dioxide ice at the poles, right? So, you know, icy Mars at the poles. Why? Because tilted like Earth, we got icy poles too, right? And remember, Mars has some moons too, and so we'll talk about that. And so there you have your worlds, your inner worlds. Thanks for hanging in there. You know that repetition will make all of this a lot more. And you know, what kind of mean musician do you want to listen to? A practiced musician and an inspired musician, athlete. Our bodies, our music, our art, etc. Just repetition. That's what sets you apart. That's what makes you different. Uh, you know, you'll forget some of this, but you'll have a sense. And uh, that's really what you come away with being in contact. And maybe you'll keep looking up. And maybe as missions happen, you'll have a sense of what it's all about. All right, cheers. We are going on to the outer planets. Handsome moons.